Hello everyone and welcome to Shelf Space. I'm your host Ross13 and today we are reviewing the HG Build Fighters R Gya Gya from Build Fighters Try. That's right, we are delving into one of the other build series. I always kind of enjoy these kits and I think you guys might like this one too. So let's go ahead and get into it. But first, let's take a look at the box. So on the front, we got a very cool illustration of the R Gya Gya equipped with its sort of a double bladed weapon thing and its big missile shields. It looks really cool in this and you got exploding backgrounds and stuff and then the Build Fighter Try logo and R Gya Gya Team Hokuso no Subo. Kaoroko Sazaki's mobile suit. Yeah. And we got the blue Bandai logo on this because this is a reissue done under the Bandai Spirits brand. Okay, on this side we got some painted shots of the kit. Now this was initially put out before they started putting English stuff on the front on the boxes. So, all Japanese here. Then on this side, we got the same illustration as the front. We got the number 024, R Gya Gya, Build Fighters Try, yada yada. Then on this side, another really nice looking painted shot. Some information about the suit and the story. And usual warning information over here and uh this was bought off of i think amazon or something like that um from a good friend of mine who uh, gave it to me as a christmas present thanks again jason and same information as before plus the blue fin logo and yeah so that's enough of the box. Let's take a look at the actual kit itself. And here it is looking pretty snazzy. Uh, now, I did go ahead and uh, panel lined this. And uh, there were a few stickers. I'll show right here. But as you can see, I didn't use all of them. Um, most of these ones are just little black marks that go on the armor. And... I had black Gundam marker, so I was able to do that pretty easily on my own. Let's give it a little spin. This thing looks really cool, I think. It is based off the uh, R. Jaja, Jar Jar, something like that, uh, from Gundam Zeta. Sorry, not Zeta, Double Zeta. And uh, that suit itself is actually pretty interesting, but I really like what they did here with this one. The uh, head, I think, is slightly redesigned. Plus, you get these interesting uh, shoulder cannons. And I think there's a other few touches here and there that really make this thing stand apart. Now, what was interesting at the time when this kit was released was the R Jar Jar didn't have its own HG kit yet. And uh, looking at the uh, runners for this one, you can see that it's actually marked for both this and uh, the R Jar Jar, however it's pronounced. I'm sure I'm butchering it. <laughs> but yeah, let's go ahead, start looking at articulation. So the head itself is kind of interesting. It's a little on the small side, but that makes the overall kit feel much larger. It's a little super robot trick. And um, the size of the head doesn't get helped by the fact that its head sort of ends in this sort of, it's almost like a snout, as it were, with the mono eye inside of it. Uh, the mono eye is static it's just a pink sticker on a black background i don't think there's even a spot uh, molded in for it so if you were to paint this you would just have to kind of do it on your own 
but the color separation on this is actually pretty decent. Uh, the eye is a sticker, like I said, but this is a nice light gray, and then you have a dark gray here, and then gold for this sort of helmet crest thing, and the shield is getting in the way. <laughs> Articulation-wise, it's on your standard polycap Gundam neck. And I just knocked off something. We'll toss that aside. And so you get a little bit of turkey necky going on here. And rotation up and down. Pretty much unrestricted. Though the, uh, as you can see, the neck is trying to spin around a little bit on itself. Uh, really, the neck is the one thing I have a problem with here, and it's just, I think it looks really thin in comparison to everything else. Uh, they really could have done with maybe putting another piece around the neck uh, just to uh, basically thicken it up a little bit. Maybe that was the effect that they were going for, but eh, it looks a little weak to me. So, torso is where things start getting a little interesting. The there is articulation in the torso and it's done in a weird way through just a combination of several different ball joints on top of ball joints. But it does give you a pretty decent ab crunch. Not too much forward, but you do get some backwards movement and side to side. It's just a little awkward and difficult to use. On uh, the shoulders, you get a butterfly joint that allows for some forward movement and a ball socket joint attached to that. And you can move things around like so. The uh, armor is on its own little joint and I just popped it off. And that allows it to kind of move around with the shoulder so that way it doesn't get in the way, at least not too much. Elbow is a little bit double jointed, but you don't get much of a bend because of the way things are constructed. Uh, hand is on the usual ball socket joint, which allows for movement and a little bit of movement up and down. Uh, these little gun wing binder things have a joint here for whatever that's worth. And then up here on the shoulders, you have these shield things, which can go, can move around quite a bit. They're on these little armatures and you can bring them in front, move them around and then stow them back in if you want. I kind of like how they are just flush up against the shoulders, but that's just me. So legs, you can move the armor up and kick forward about that far. You could probably go a little bit more if it weren't for the skirt armor. Then you have an okay double jointed knee. Not too spectacular, but it does the job. And then ankles are on a series of joints that allow for pretty sizable range of movement. You can go back and forth and some decent rocking, which means you can get this into a nice wide stance. Uh, rear skirt is fixed in place. So kicking back is pretty much a non-starter. And let's see, how can we do the splits? Oh, pretty much full Van Dam without the skirt armor popping off. That's impressive. Yeah, so overall, this is a really, really cool kit, and I'm really glad I got it for Christmas. Let's take a quick look at accessories. Okay, so we'll start off with her sword. This one can be attached on the side. Eagle-eyed viewers will probably notice that I had it attached like this at the beginning of the video. 
and you can pull out the hilt and then oh that actually was supposed to stay in you can attach this beam saber and get a nice fairly sizable beam saber and I have to say, it does look pretty cool but I kind of dig it being on the side. Um, a little bit like a Justice Knight. And there is another weapon that I really like. This number right here. I'm not entirely certain what they call it. But what's neat about it is that it uses um, the sort of typical sword that the Gyan had. Because this is while it's based off of the R Jaja, it is also based off of the Gyan. So you actually have it look like it's got two of these blades attached in here. Though this one can come off and be wielded individually if you wanted to. And then you just have this double beam bladed beam saber thing with this sort of shielded uh, guard. And I did have this equipped earlier as well, but when I was doing articulation, I took it off. So we'll go ahead, pop this back on. And the way you put it in is you take off the back plate, put that inside, and then just put the back plate back on. Now, the only problem is it doesn't really hold it super securely. It's a circular um, handle with a uh, square peg, or a square hole that it's going into. So it uh, does rotate around a little bit more than I would like. And as you can see, this part does keep popping off any time too much pressure is applied to it. So he looks pretty darn cool with this thing. Another thing he comes with is if you wanted, you could take these shields off and uh, put them on here. And these can be used to basically mount the shields and have them hold them. But I think that looks a little silly and I prefer them up here. So I'm not really using these. And finally, he comes with a whole bunch of beam effect parts. We have a total of eight of these little leaf looking things. And what they're for, let's see, I haven't actually done this myself. There we go. Is you attach them to the shield here. Which, kind of neat, doesn't really go with the aesthetic I wanted for this thing. So, in fact, I didn't even have these things trimmed off the runner until I started the review for this thing. And As you can see, I still have four of them still attached to the runner. Uh... Extra part wise, you also have this, which I believe is off of the, I think it's called the Northern Pod, which this is where the, uh, the bell guard and hilts for this thing come from. I accidentally uh, trimmed off two of them because I thought I needed both. Really, I only needed the one. Uh, but you also have these solid colored um, sort of beam saber blades. Though I think technically the, they're kind of meant for the GAN. And I don't know if the GAN actually had a beam saber or if it was some other weird thing. But yeah. Uh, so like I said, overall, I dig this kit. I really, really do. 
It was a fun, interesting build. The color separation on it is phenomenal. Articulation is pretty decent. And just the overall design is really, really cool. Uh, kind of the idea I have for this thing is uh, to display it with uh, the Justice Knight. Uh, and at some point, I think I want to get like the, uh, what's it called? The, uh, uh, like Gan the, uh, Ganser Lot or something like that. There's a, um, another Gan based mobile suit that looks very much like a knight. And I think those three together would look really, really cool. In fact, take a picture of this thing. That might be the thumbnail. <laughs> anyway. Thank you very much. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Comparisons. I am so sorry. <laughs> Give you an idea. This thing is kind of a, a beefy mobile suit. Here it is next to the GBN base Gundam, which is, you know, pretty standard Gundam size. And this thing looks massive next to it. Also, with the legs splayed out like this, it's almost to the same head height. But that means if I put the legs together, this thing is going to be so much taller. <laughs> okay, for real this time, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. Uh, don't forget to check the description below for links to my storefront where you can get official shelf space t-shirts and more. And yeah, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you the next time you invade my shelf space.